All right, Road Grinders, here we are Saturday night. What a night. Coming off an epic, epic, epic King of the Court contest last night. Uh, Gaby and I were on air till about 1.20 a.m. cards. I believe I can say that I am too old for this leap. <laughs> How was your night, Cart? <laughs> well, that's pretty good. I had a little... Uh, profit last night through all my NBA action did get passed by quite a few Blake Griffins in the end uh, in that tournament last night but uh, overall the night ended on a positive note and uh, so we're doing just fine well, that's what we like to hear I finished tied for 400 with two other people so I got a nice hundred dollar cash out of my four tickets not too I'm not complaining I guess it was it was kind of funny that was my big sweat was I was up to 220th, and then I dropped to the 500s with, with just that uh, L.A. game still going on. But uh, such is life. I had just enough uh, there to do it, so we are good. The Clippers oh. pretty much scored every time they had the ball, it seemed like. They were yeah. getting the basket, so... Yeah, it was uh, it was interesting. It was interesting. But that's okay. We got a full slate. Seven games tonight, or seven, nine games tonight. I don't know what we're going to do with ourselves. That's a lot of stuff going on. Is there any any uh, injuries we need to watch out for, Cards? Do you have anything on Aaron Aflalo? I, I haven't seen anything on Aflalo. I, I, I know he got nicked up last uh, last night, but I haven't seen anything one way or the other. Um, sounds like Chandler Parsons is doubtful for uh, Houston tonight. Same thing with Tyreek Evans. I know a lot of people got burned by him last night, so... Um, probably not going to go back to that well again anytime soon. Um, nothing, you know, nothing really out of the ordinary outside of, of those guys. Um, J.R. Smith is probably not going to be part of the Knicks rotation tonight. They've come out and said that. That's kind of big news with them playing the Sixers tonight. The Knicks are going to be extremely shorthanded. Um, that's kind of what I've seen throughout the day today. All right, that uh, pretty much matches up with what I've got. I've been busy doing write-ups and newsletters and projections, and now I've got the show. Apparently this is the all-EMAC weekend here. I'm glad to bring you in cards for a little counterpoint because uh, just one person doing all the analysis. We don't want too much bias, but I'm covering for JMB Wingspan uh, for his sites. I've got this. It's just it's crazy. It's all me. I better not screw up today, huh? Yeah, everyone's looking at you. <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't use all my luck on that little uh, college basketball team you helped me put together last night. Yeah, I saw for a while there, and at least in the $1 tournament on DraftKings, I saw that you were in the lead, so I uh, I accused you of sandbagging a little bit, but uh, <laughs> I know it looks like you're probably not going to finish in the top spot, but um, still a pretty solid scorer anyway. Yeah, not too bad. Now, I must confess that that was my only contest I entered on DraftKings. I, I, the time got away from me this morning. I was going to pull that into a couple of other cost, uh, contests, but didn't make it on Draft Street. So uh, my, my, big, my big 8 or $10 in play, I was hoping to get about 50 bucks in play, but we'll save that for next weekend. Anyhow, all right, shall we just tee it off? Do you, do you want to go with... Uh, uh, it's it's the weekend. Start with the front of the games. We're not going to infer on other people's style. We have our own style cards. That's right. We can start at the front. That's fine. Yes, because we're very by the book. That's the key. <laughs> Smizzle and I orderly. started start. Smizzle and I started from the end last night, and I was out of my comfort zone. So we'll we'll stick with what we know. Yeah, I, I when I'm on the show with him uh, or the week show, the weekday show, I defer to whatever that host wants and Smizzle and Tommy usually like to go reverse order so we're doing it our way just like Laverne and Shirley you That's can be sure before Shirley, my be, time or, oh <laughs> everything's before your time cards come on come on what was alright before we get started what was the first primetime TV show you remember watching uh, it's funny I, I, I was talking to a co-worker about this yesterday because Tommy G posted it um, in the threads I would say there's two that the the kind of kind of a little a little bit of memory but not a ton would be Alf, um, and, and then a little bit more memory of dinosaurs and I love that picture that uh, Tommy G posted of Soccer Dave uh, and the dinosaurs baby so that's kind of that's kind of the first one I would defer to would be uh, uh, dinosaurs. 
It was, oh, that's right. That that was an actual TV show. Yeah, I it was. It was a that. pretty good show. It had a pretty good run. I'd say maybe four or five seasons. But uh, you know, and I mean, if you want to go, you know, different. Roseanne was kind of big when I was little, or, or Full House. You know, those weren't exactly always prime time, but they are. They're on at night these days on you know Nick at Night or something like that. But um, those were kind of shows that were on when I was you know eight to ten years old, maybe. All right. Well, you missed out on the first run of the Dukes of Hazard. That was a good show. That was revolutionary stuff. And chips. Good good times. Good times. Swizzle knows what I'm talking about. All right. Let's fire it up. Brooklyn, Toronto. So uh, is it Darren or is it Deron Williams? I, I, I believe it's Darren. But Okay. So Darren Williams has had every known treatment possible to his ankles. He had the the platelet injection treatment, he has had a cortisone shot, I, obviously he's icing it, I'm sure there's a ton of anti-inflammatories. I think he's not going to play for another week or two. What are, what are your thoughts on that? And then two, is there a bigger dumpster fire than the than the Brooklyn Nets this year? Yeah, they beat the Heat last night, which was very, very surprising. Um, the, their reward for beating the Heat, a double overtime game just last night, and now they get to travel on the road and take on Toronto. A real tough spot for the Nets in this one. Um, you know, Darren Williams is going to be like Dwayne Wade here before long, the perpetual game time decision. Uh, until we hear confirmation otherwise, it's safe to assume that he's out, you know, for whatever length of time. Um, so Sean Livingston becomes your plug and play. Joe Johnson is going to be a very popular pick uh, tonight because he played very well. Last night, his shot was falling, but now they're on the road. That game last night, double overtime. Um, they played a lot of minutes in a very emotionally draining win over the Heat. I am fading Joe Johnson tonight on all of my teams. Um, you know, he's a lot worse on the road. I read the blog from, from Scott over there at draft day. He agrees he's in the boat for fading Joe Johnson tonight. Just generally not a fan of taking teams that have to travel on the road in a back-to-back, -back playing off of a double overtime game. So I'm not going to roster anybody from the Nets tonight. Uh, whether that's a wise move or not, I don't know. But uh, it just doesn't seem like they're in a good spot to me. Yeah, I'm not against running out Joe Johnson a little bit on FanDuel as a differentiation play at 5,400. And then, again, at DraftKings, 4,900. But there's a, there's a uh, an Al Smizzle uh, game coming up here, or a Gary Oldman game. So uh, that's more of a differentiation play than anything else. Uh, and I like a little bit of uh, Livingston. He gets more rebounds than assists. That kind of surprised me, and it's fairly consistent this year. I guess yeah, he's it's a pretty good, pretty good rebounder for a point guard, for for sure. Yeah, well, he's tall. And then with Paul, <laughs> he's in the NBA, and my analysis is, oh, he's tall. They're all <laughs> tall in the NBA. Well, except for Muggsy Bogues. Uh, so anyway, but with Joe Johnson kind of as a playmaker along with Paul Pierce, I think that's tamping down his assists somewhat also, but he's at a good price and he's going to get all the minutes he can handle. Uh, what about the Toronto side? I, in my write-ups I said, hey, I, I, I'm meh on all of them. I'm not neither for them nor am I against them, and I'm just kind of slotting them in where they where they fit my rosters if it's convenient. But there was nobody I wanted to rush out and, uh, and, and get on my squads tonight. How about for yourself? Yeah, I think that's kind of just the, the common theme for them. I mean, they're a very balanced team, uh, very consistent Everyone seems to produce kind of around where their price level is, so it doesn't really get you excited about taking them on a nightly basis. I mean, Kyle Lowry's probably their most consistent option, but he's priced as their most consistent option. Uh, I think he'd be in play if he fits with what you have left salary-wise, but um, he's gotten a little too expensive on some sites where I don't know as if tonight would be the night I think it's worth paying for him. Um, I mean, Toronto's favored by almost double digits in this game, so I think Vegas is agreeing uh, that's a tough spot for the Nets with the back-to-back. Um, where the Nets can really be beaten is uh, is on the interior. So if you want to roster a guy like Amir Johnson or Jonas Valanciunas, I, I think they're worthy plays, but uh, they carry a little bit of risk because, you know, as opposed to the other guys on the team like DeMar DeRozan or Lowry, they're a little bit more inconsistent, um, sometimes get in foul trouble, sometimes get their minutes monitored a little bit. Um, but that's where you can attack the Nets. So certainly I'd be for an Amir Johnson or Valanciunas play, maybe in a GPP. Um, the, center the, the center options tonight aren't really that appealing unless you're uh, paying up you know, for a Dwight Howard or something like that. So if you want to go with Valanciunas, that's fine. But I agree with you. I'd, 
if they fit, yeah, that's that's fine to sub them in or put them in, you know, slot them in where they uh, fit. But I'm not going out of my way to get anybody from Toronto either. All right, uh, let's skip right along to Houston at the Washington Wizards, my my new NBA team. I think I'm finally. I'm still holding out hope for the Seattle Supersonics. Tom Chambers, Xavier McDaniel, Sedale 3, uh, Nate McMillan, Matt 10, Easy 8. That was an awesome team. Uh, anyway, back to Houston. James Harden, yes, please. I don't think anybody on the uh, the wizard, it, Wizards are going to be able to guard him. Uh, Dwight, the Wizards' defense, I just can't get a good read on them. They play tougher at home. Their bigs are hit and miss. I think they're, they're going <laughs> to try to funnel Dwight towards... Gortat today, that's my guess. I still think Dwight's going to get a 2010 easy. His price needs him to get closer to uh, 40 total points and rebounds to pay that off. So I'm, I'm on the fence with Dwight. What do you got on this side? Yeah, I think they're. Uh, I think Harden and, and Howard are both in play simply because they seem to both put up better numbers when uh, when Parsons is out. Now that, that factor might already be priced into him on a lot of sites. And I still don't think Washington's as strong inside as their defense first position rank for the season might indicate. So I think Howard's fine. He's probably the guy if you're spending at center tonight. Now, I don't think you have to take take him by any means, uh, and he won't be on too many of my rosters. But I certainly think he's in play. And then Harden uh, also. Um, now, on our sponsor site, DraftKings, I, I kind of caution against using Harden tonight. That 9700 price tag is a little too steep for me. I don't think I'd spend that much on him. Um, but other than that, you know, other Houston guys are just Terrence Jones. You don't know what you're going to get on a night-to-night basis. Same with Jeremy Lin. Uh, the one guy I really, really like in, in this game, and I have him on, on virtually all of my teams tonight, is John Wall. Uh, Jeremy Lin, obviously not known as a good defender. John Wall's price has come down a bit on some sites, uh, especially DraftKings. So uh, I think John Wall's a guy that, that you should definitely target tonight. He's probably my favorite overall point guard play. Um, not really in love with anybody else on the Wizards. Maybe Trevor Ariza if he's still cheap, but he's been really up and down of late. Um, I love John Wall. I think he's probably the play for me from this game. Completely agree. He's my top play of the night, uh, John Wall, so I won't beat that horse into the ground. I'm staying away from Beal, Ariza, and uh, why is my name blanking on their other guy? Um, uh, Martel Webster. I need Booker one of those. And, uh, no, Webster, the three swing men. I need somebody to be hurt before I'm going to play those guys. One yeah. of them's going to do well. I mean, hey, they're going against Harden in, in Houston. I just don't know which one. It's too hard to tell. And their prices, I mean, Martel's price is coming down, but he's, he's the worst of the book. He has the least opportunity of the bunch because he's coming off the bench. And hey, if he hits five threes, awesome. He's going to have a great night. But I don't want to be banking on that unless I'm looking at for Anthony Tolliver. We'll get to that game in a second. I like Booker. He's still cheap. He's starting. He's a double double. Uh, Gortat. I'm not on him today. I just I, and I don't mind playing people against Dwight. I think, as I mentioned before, I think that they're going to funnel Dwight towards Gortat, and Gortat's going to be in foul trouble today is my guess. So I think that's his limiting factor, not the fact that he's offensively going against uh, D12, but the fact that he's going to pick up fouls just trying to slow him down. So I think that's going to cap his upside tonight. Uh, anything else for you in this game? No, I think that about it covers it. It's you know John Wall is the guy for me. Um, uh, probably one of the only guys you'll see from from that game on my rosters, uh, just because of the pricing on the Houston guys. They're kind of high. All right, that brings us up to Phoenix at Detroit. All right, there's one name we're going to mention once, and then we're not going to say it again today. That's Rodney Stuckey. Damn you, Stuckey. Damn you. Three minutes, negative half a point. What a bleeping. Bleepity bleep. But that's okay because I think he's going to be in the doghouse tonight. We have Contavious Caldwell Pope and Will Bynum that are poised to receive some extra minutes. I think Jennings bounces back today. And I really like Drummond because I do not think he is going to get in foul trouble guarding the Phoenix Bigs because that's the style of play that they, their, or their offensive sets that they run. I don't think he's going to get in foul trouble. So I like Drummond when I'm pretty sure he's not going to get in foul trouble. That said, he's very good at collecting fouls and that's always in play. I just don't think it's going to happen tonight. Uh, who do you like from the Detroit side tonight? Yeah, um, I, I like Josh Smith again. I know he is very inconsistent. Um, he blew up last night, just a huge game against Philly. I don't think the Suns have anybody that can really match up with him, so I like Jay Smooth to have another good game tonight. 
Um, kind of going to be off the Monroe train. The reason Josh Smith had a really good game last night, they let him play most of the game at the four, and he seems like he's more comfortable there. Uh, and when Monroe was on the bench, they let Smith run at the power forward spot, uh, and Monroe only saw about 22, 23 minutes last night. So I'm off of him. I like Smith. I agree. I think Jennings has a good bounce-back game. Uh, Drummond, I think, is a fine play as well if you want to you know, pay for a fairly high center but don't want to go all the way up to Howard tonight. Uh, on the Phoenix side of the ball, I mean, Goran Dragic has kind of been the man for the Suns. Uh, with Eric Bledsoe out, he's he's about as safe a play as you're going to get at the point guard position. Now his price has started to rise on most sites, so I don't think he's a must play, uh, but certainly a good matchup in a game with a 207 total and a one point spread. Um, Gerald Green, he's just he's had a few duds in a row, but he's had some tough matchups. If you want to take a gamble on the shooting guard position on a site like FanDuel, where there aren't a ton of options tonight. Um, I think Gerald Green's an okay play. Probably wouldn't play him, uh, you know, across the board in all my action just because his shot hasn't been falling of late. But I think he's okay. Um, not going for any of the Suns' big men just because they're so hard to predict on a nightly basis. They all like to shoot the three. Uh, it's just easier to stay away from that. It's Dragic or, or Green for me if you're targeting any Phoenix guys. Completely agree. Uh, I've got Plumlee and Fry and a couple low-level GPPs just in case they decide to hit some threes. That's it. Uh, moving right along, New York at Philly. Here we go. This is it. This is the one. Everybody, everybody cards. Who do we not like? Uh, <laughs> I was trying to figure this out um, when I was putting together teams on DraftKings this morning. And I'll tell you the one guy, um, you know, the Knicks are only going to have, like, somebody did the analysis on Twitter earlier. I forget who it was. Um but the Knicks only, it, it, assuming J.R. Smith does not play, they have 10 active bodies. Uh, two of them have played a combined two minutes in the last five games. That's Cole Aldrich and somebody else. If you take them out, that leaves the Knicks with eight healthy guys, uh, which would be their five starters plus Amare, Torrey Murray, and uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. So, you know, eight guys playing the Sixers, uh, they're all going to get significant minutes, so I, I don't think you can go wrong with any of the five starters for sure. Um, with Tyson Chandler out, so that'd be Bargnani, Kenyon Martin, uh, Iman Shumpert, Carmelo, and Raymond Felton. Uh, the guy that I would say would be the least attractive target out of the five starters would probably be Shumpert on a site like DraftKings because he's 5400 over there. Um, Shumpert's more expensive than Felton, which I, I think is a little bit of a misprice. Uh, at 5,400, he needs about 32 fantasy points to get uh, value if you're if you're shooting for 300 over there. Even if Shumpert plays 40 minutes, he's, he's not the kind of volume scorer uh, or, or passer or rebounder or anything like that to get you that much on a consistent basis. So I don't think you have to reach for Iman Shumpert, but really I have exposure to all the rest of them. Uh, Kenyon Martin because he's bare minimum salary, um, Bargnani because he's virtually assured of playing a bunch of minutes because Kenyon Martin's not going to play 40 minutes and they don't have any other depth in the front court. Uh, I like Felton. I think his price is very reasonable. And, I mean, if you don't play Carmelo tonight, you're playing with fire. So, um, you know, if you're if you're taking the Knicks, um, Shumpert's the guy I would at least like to pay up for, but I like the rest of them. All right. I can get behind that. I'm just like, oh, I've got Shumpert in my... And do a lineup start now. Well, that's okay. I mean, how much is he over there? Forty six hundred. Yeah, I think it. he's fine. I think he's fine at four, forty six hundred on Fanduel with a a fifty uh, sixty k cap. Uh, much different than fifty four hundred on DraftKings with a fifty k cap. Um, much larger percentage of the cap over there on DraftKings. I think he's fine on every other site, but DraftKings he seems a bit high. All right. Speaking of DraftKings, did you put any? Uh, Entries into the four hundred thousand dollar divisional clash contest. Winner gets a hundred thousand dollars. I can't believe that thing filled. I had a ticket. Uh, I just didn't get around to entering it. It's so long. Yeah, I won twelve tickets last night. So that's how many I have. I didn't purchase any, uh, and I didn't try, try well, to qualify. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's back up. You won twelve <laughs> tickets last night. I did. I won twelve tickets last night. I spent. Uh, there's a $200 entry, so that's $2,400 worth of tickets. I spent about $600 in entry fees. Uh, all my teams on DraftKings did fairly well last night, so um, I spent about $600 and won $2,400 worth of tickets. So I've got 12 teams, uh, and we'll see how those turn out. 
All right. Well, currently we've got uh, one Mr. Al Zeidenfeld is uh, in second place right now by a point. And Rotogrinder's Cal is in third. So a lot of games left. We're, very, we're not even at halftime yet of the first game, but you got to like seeing your name in lights. I'm not involved in that one, so I'm a little sad. But that's okay. All right. Enough talking about that. Let's get back to Philly here. So Philly, I like James Anderson tonight because Hollis Thompson's in the doghouse. The boy Allen's already ruled out. And Tony wrote and missed a couple games already this week. Uh, he's back. He played last night, but he's he's had uh, migraines and the flu and uh, various sundry other uh, issues. So he's kind of my sneaky play tonight. That's really not that sneaky. I like Michael Carter Williams. Sorry, MC Double. Or what are we going to call him? Uh, I, I don't even know anymore. Mike. Oh, there we go. So you Mike, like Mike? I like Mike. I like him tonight. Uh, the Pistons guards. I'm on record many times saying I like to go against them. Uh, those are my two favorite plays. And then Spencer Haas, University of Washington, and uh, also, hey, Turner and uh, Fatty Daddy are both down in price because their performances haven't been that great, but they looked really good yesterday. Uh, so, I, again, everybody's in play, and I think some of the people have their prices tempered just enough that they're they're reasonable. What is your read on this game, Cards, from this side uh, of the ball? Uh, I, I don't know. It's tough for me just because you don't know where the production is going to come from. I mean, somebody is probably going to have a huge game, no doubt, but um, they're a little bit harder to peg. Now, the fact that they fa play at such a fast pace uh, it does help their Projections on a nightly basis. I would say my favorite, I, I don't think any of the Knicks guys inside, whether it be Bargnani or Kenya Martin, um, have the ability to match up with Thaddeus Young and Spencer Hawes. So I'd say th those two are probably my favorite. Um, I I'm not on MCW tonight just because I Raymond Felton is a fairly good defender. Now, if Udra was still starting, uh, I'd change my tune on that uh, definitely. But... Um, I don't know. It's more of a gut thing than anything. I think I like their big guys more tonight. I saw what you did there. Raymond Felton, a gut. Fat Raymond <laughs> Felton. You're picking on him already. <laughs> I, did. oh. I didn't mean I it, Mr. Felton. <laughs> Oh hell! I called him Fat Raymond or Fat Felton in my write-up, and I'm I'm a not exactly spelt myself, so I can say that. But I don't think he can stay in front of uh, Michael Carter Williams tonight. I just I don't see it. I think the Pistons are just going to be sucking wind all of them, just because they're playing so many minutes at a high pace. I don't think they're going to be doing uh, you know intentionally dogging it, but I think they're going to focus on. Are you saying That's... that he's going to be sucking wind because he's fat? No, because of pace. <laughs> And then male maybe a little bit because he's fat. But that's okay because the Raymond Felton support group will be meeting uh, after tip-off in the Grinders Live chat. We will be comforting each other uh, with our favorite <laughs> foods and dinners, and it will be exciting. And hopefully the Pistons will, or the, sorry, the Knicks will treat us well tonight. Uh, so we'll see what's going on there shortly. I'm looking forward to that game. I'm definitely watching that one. One game I'm not going to watch, Charlotte and Chicago. Can I, can I get a can I get an M? Can I get an E? Can I get an H? Meh. Yeah. I tweeted out earlier that the uh, the Pistons Sixers game last night had more points in uh, the first 33 minutes uh, than the Bulls Bucks game had for the whole game. Yeah, yeah, horrible, horrible. And right. Charlotte, Charlotte, and Chicago. I mean, they've got to both be in like the bottom five in the league and tempo and neither of them are good offensive teams and um, you know if you take a lot if you take more than one player from this game you're more than welcome to join the Raymond Felton support group because you're probably going to need it um, I mean I can see rostering maybe Carlos Boozer because he's still cheap on a lot of sites maybe Jimmy Butler because he's going to get uh, 40 minutes again maybe Kirk Heinrich if you want somebody that's really cheap but for for heaven's sakes don't take more than one um, no reason to load up on this game at all with the total in the 170s. Yeah, I, I can, I'm on board. Uh, Noah sporadically is about all, all I've really fired up for this game. I just I can't do it. I'm not even on McBob tonight, which is sad because normally I'm a huge proponent of him. I will say Gerald Henderson uh, has been a nice sneaky uh, trade candidate or somebody that I've acquired in a couple trades and 
in my season-long leagues. And he's playing very well, but that's really not going to help us tonight. So let's move along. Milwaukee at OKC. We've got uh, we're about halfway through our game slate cards. We have plenty of time. So we'd like to thank DraftKings for sponsoring us today. They've got a little bit of overlay cropping up on some of their NBA contests. I think that uh, four hundred thousand uh, dollar professional football last shot weekend uh, sucked a lot of the money uh, that was floating around today. But they've got a little overlay, so let's jump on in that, guys and gals. And cards. Let's talk a little Milwaukee and OKC. One of the bigger spreads I've seen this year for sure. 14 and a half. The line on this game. The Bucks are a train wreck. They're on the back end of a back-to-back on the road in Oklahoma City. A real tough spot for them. Needless to say, I'm not on any of Larry Drew's fighting Bucks tonight. Um, because again, if you roster a Buck tonight, you're also welcome to join the Raymond Felton support group. Uh, plenty of room for you if you if you take some Bucks tonight, you can join. Um, not on them. I don't think a whole lot of people are going to be. Uh, OKC. I mean, it's it's people are going to talk about the blowout risk, but with Westbrook out, if they blow a team out. What are the chances that they blow a team out without Kevin Durant having a pretty big game? Um, so I wouldn't get scared off of Durant, you know, simply because of the blowout risk. Now, if you think that the price is too high uh, and there's better options tonight, that's fair, uh, just because you know this game could get pretty sloppy um, and and maybe they'll monitor Durant's minutes a little bit. That's a fair critique if that's the reason you don't want to roster him. Um, but I wouldn't worry about the blowout factor too much. Uh, if you want to roster Reggie Jackson, still pretty cheap, although Brandon Knight's a pretty good defender. I, I don't think I'm on him tonight. I do like Serge Ibaka. Uh, Milwaukee, very weak on the interior, and I think he could have a nice game against their big guys tonight. Yeah, Durant's really the only one I'm looking at here. I wouldn't be against Brandon Knight. He jacked up 21 shots the other uh, game. That's just impressive. Why is Ridnour playing 40 minutes? I mean, seriously, Why? Uh, and ask Larry Drew. It's a goddamn three ring circus. I'm I'm just I, I can't handle. I, and I'm they have some talented players there, but he is just yanking everyone around. I don't want any anything to do with them at this point. Uh, and this is coming from a guy that did quite well with Chris Middleton, <laughs> who hooked me up uh, about was that about a month ago when he was effective. But uh, he's just not getting. Then he got benched. Yeah. It, well, for being effective, but they're I guess they're he trying to go for the too lottery. Well, <laughs> well that that's the whole thing. They want to make the playoffs. Their owner has them tabbed at 40 and 42 every year and just getting that eighth seed and getting bounced in the first round. So why they're trying to lose this year, God only knows. But anyway, enough about them. New Orleans, Dallas. Ooh, cards, deja vu. I feel like we've seen this game before. Hmm. Yeah, we have. Yes, we have. And we all liked, uh, we all liked Brian Roberts last night. Do we like him again tonight? Same situation? I think so, and, and here's why. With with Holiday out and with Tyreek Evans now out, um, where else can they go? I mean, their backcourt options are Eric Gordon, uh, <laughs> Roberts, and... No more Tyreek talks. No more Tyreek. That's the secret word. We don't mention Tyreek and, and the S word either. There you go. Okay. The, Continue. So the, the, their backcourt options are, are Eric Gordon, uh, Roberts, and Austin Rivers. I mean, Austin Rivers got some extended run at, at points last year, and he was laughably bad, like Marquise Teague for the Bulls bad. Um, the, the minutes are going to be there for Roberts tonight as long as this game stays relatively close. Uh, the, obviously, he's still just as cheap as he was last night. I think he's in play. I think a lot of people will be scared away. Um, Dallas is not that good at defending the points, so I think I'll roll them out again tonight, uh, see what happens. Uh, and clearly, um, the Pelicans have no other real options on their offense outside of Anthony Davis, so I think Davis is in play. Um, you know, Dallas weak defending the interior, Dirk or, or whoever their rotating door of centers is, is not going to be able to slow down Anthony Davis. He had, you know, 50 fantasy points on a lot of different scoring systems last night. Um, so I think Roberts and Davis are your options for the Pelicans. Uh, I really don't see rostering anybody else. Yeah, I agree. And if I ever roster Austin Rivers, somebody give me. I just I'm in a bad place if I ever do that. Uh, Dallas, who do you think? Monte, Monta, Ellis, 
What else? Can we trust him now? He's actually showing a spark. He's hitting his shot. He's doing all sorts of Monte, 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 Ellis kind of things. Uh, did we trust him? Uh, is he back? I think you can trust him. I mean, New Orleans isn't exactly an intimidating matchup, so yeah, I, I think he's worth a play um, again, but he's, he's priced kind of high. I wouldn't touch Dirk on the second half of a back-to-back. -back. It seems like he's kind of wearing down a little bit, so they might uh, take it easy on him. Um, if you're picking anybody from Dallas, I think Ellis is the guy. Um, really don't see anything else that, that jumps off the page at me. You know what jumped off the page at me last night? 40 minutes for one Jay Crowder. Well, how did that happen? Sneaky. Yeah, that, I mean, the, he's always had some talent, uh, but uh, he's not a guy that they, you know, run plays for or anything like that. I mean, even with all those minutes, it's not like he put up a huge stat line or anything like that. Yeah, uh, and I actually kind of like Dirk lightly as a little bit of a differentiation play. I think he's playing efficient. I don't think that uh, New Orleans has anybody that can guard him. I don't think he has more than 40-point upside, but I like him for about 30 fantasy points tonight, uh, which is about where he's priced. But in a cash game, I am not against getting uh, that kind of safety production. Uh, that's about it. I'm, I just, yeah, there's a lot of injuries in that game. There's a lot of injuries tonight, a lot of value tonight, cards. And an interesting thought, I was still trying to get uh, Durant in a few of my lineups. And even though there's a ton of value, it's a little tricky if you're still trying to put in Harden or Wall or somebody else with Durant on some sites. He is priced incredibly high. Uh, so let's take, we got a little time, so let's take a little detour on that. Who is your must, must, must play tonight? I'm thinking it's got to be Wall. Potentially Durant, just because he's the the engine that runs that whole show, and Carmelo. I don't. Mello for sure. Carmelo. Yeah. We can't. We cannot leave Mello out. Uh, MCW. I mean, his price is up there, but I think his production is going to be right up there tonight too. Because our buddy, my my tubby pal uh, Felton, he's going to have a little trouble with him. So we'll see. And he's going to be winded. Winded. That's a good way of saying. It. That's a polite way of saying it. Oh, he's a little winded. He's gassed. He's, he's going to go to the bench for a few minutes. He needs a blow, a quick breather. Yeah. That's what, that's what they say. Uh, okay. Orlando, Denver. Anything on a flawlow? Still haven't seen anything. I did. Chandler okay. Parsons is out, so that's kind of the only thing I've seen uh, come across. the. I just pulled up Raymond Felton's player card on ESPN, and he's smiling at me, and I just got a little chuckle out of that. But anyway, uh, he's. I wanted to see what he was listed at. What do you think he's listed at? Uh, how tall is he? He's 6'1". Six, 6'1". One. Six, six, one. One. Oh, they're going to list him at like 180. He's list, He's actually listed at 205. Oh, really? Oh, I was going to say real weight was 220, but if he's listed at 205, real weight might be closer to 235. And I'm 12 days, uh, that's a fun fact, I'm 12 days older than him, so uh, he was born uh, June 26th of 84, so uh, I've got him by 12 days. Look at that, it's like your twins. Hey, speaking yeah. Of, yeah. <laughs> speaking of blasts from the past, I saw a picture of uh, Steve Francis in China. He looks like an old man. He is 37. Is he still I, playing over there? I don't know what the, the context was. He was next to some really old guy. I say really old guy. This guy was dressed in a Chinese basketball or Chinese Basketball Association uh, uniform. I don't know if it was a fantasy camp or whatever because that guy looked like he was 40 or, or older. But... But it was just, I mean, Francis, what happened? God, he was so good. Stevie Franchise, damn it. I hate to see that. Yeah, uh, short career in the in the NBA for him, but he was good for a few years there for sure. Anyway, back to the Magic. I haven't seen anything on a flallow. Uh, Twelve and a half point spread here worries me a bit. You know, we always talk about targeting Denver, uh, targeting against them inside, so... Um, I'll repeat, you know, what I've been saying the last few games. If you're going to take anybody from the Magic, I think your best targets are Tobias Harris and Glenn Davis. Uh, Davis has been playing surprisingly well. A lot of people are still off of him, but with Vucevic out, um, you know, Glenn Davis has been a guy that's been very steady of late. I like him tonight. I like Tobias tonight. And on the Denver side of the ball, um, nobody really playing hotter for them right now than Ty Lawson. Seems fully recovered from his injuries, playing 36, 38 minutes a game. Uh, so I think uh, Lawson's the top guy for the Nuggets tonight. 
Yep, completely agree with that. He's turned into quite the efficient DFS hero this season, and I like his upside. He's got that flirts with 50 points. Uh, yeah, I'm high on him tonight. He's not in as many rosters as I was hoping he would be. I'll have to make a few more after the show here. Um, all righty, so I've got a, a rapid fire set up. We've got one game left with Boston and Portland. I'm going to open up the uh, exclusive chat to uh, answer a few questions there. We'll take questions in this chat here. And we've got uh, about 25 minutes, so we have plenty of time to answer questions. So, Cards, take us through this last game. I'm going to just put myself on mute here for a sec while I type a few things, and uh, then let's see what transpires. All right, uh, Boston and Portland, a 12-point spread in favor of the Blazers at home tonight. Boston coming off a very tough uh, a game against the, the Warriors last night. Got beat by Stephen Curry with a couple seconds to go. Again, like that Brooklyn game against the Heat last night, I think this is a tough spot for the Celtics on the road on the West Coast, um, going against a very good Portland team, and a 12-point spread kind of certainly indicates that as well. Um, tough to target anybody from Boston just because you don't know what you're going to get on a nightly basis. Chris Humphreys has been playing surprisingly well. Uh, I know Stevie that won the uh, Star Street seat last night, a very big fan of, of Chris Humphreys um, and his entourage after that uh, game last night against Golden State. It came down to that game in the second half. Humphreys played very well and led Stevie to victory. So of all people, Chris Humphreys helps win a Star Street a Playboy qualifier for uh, Stevie, so I'm sure, I don't know if he's in the chat right now or not, but uh, I'm sure he's very happy about that. So shout out to Chris Humphreys for helping a DFS player out. Uh, that being said, I, I don't really think tonight's the night to target him with the back-to-back. -back, um, tough matchup against Portland. He might get in foul trouble. I think Portland's the side of the ball you got to look to on this one. I don't like Damian Lillard with, with uh, Avery Bradley most likely shadowing him tonight. I think this is the night to lay off of him. Um, if I'm going to target anybody on Portland tonight, I like Batum, who's been, despite wearing a splint on his finger, um, had a triple-double the last game with, I think, 14 assists or something like that. A very, very huge game. He's playing well of late, so I like Nick Batum. Uh, obviously, Aldridge is in play, and I think Robin Lopez might be a sneaky play as well tonight uh, with a huge size advantage over the Boston front court. All right, let me uh, jump back to this game. Is there anybody we missed? No, I've got Aldridge and I've got Lillard on a couple low-level GPPs. They're just priced up so darn high. Lopez will be the one I am uh, rostering with more frequency because I think he doesn't get his due. And then I'm just rolling with Humphreys and Bass, whichever's cheaper if I need a punt play. That's really all I'm looking at for this game. Uh, I agree with you with Crawford and Bradley. It's, it's a shame. This would be a good game, but the Portland guys are all priced up, and I just I don't see it. I just don't want to pay their prices tonight. Uh, I think there's other value elsewhere. Uh, on that. All right, so we got a couple questions here on the incentive chat, so we're going to run out with that, and then we'll get the questions going on on our chat, and we're just going to have some fun. So, best value tonight at small forward cards on uh, FanDuel. So FanDuel, it's always tough because that's that. There's just a dearth of talent that at that position. I'm going to say if I'm punting, I'm probably going to go with Aminu at 4.4k. Uh, I may roll the dice with Omri Caspi at 3.6. The plays I'm willing to pay for would, of course, be Kevin Durant if I'm going to monkey my lineup around to get him in. And then I'm happy running out Josh Smith and Evan Turner at 76 and 7,000, respectively. So you've kind of got the gamut. It's actually not as hard. or it's there. You have choices tonight, I should say. Uh, is there anybody I missed or someone you could highlight differently than that? Yeah, I... It's tough. I mean, I would say that you should spend. And if you, if let's say you have, hang on, let me let me scroll back up to the top of the page here. Let's say you have 15k to spend on the small forward position on FanDuel. Uh, I wouldn't roster Durant. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend the what 11.9 on Durant and try to find a punt. Um, there's just not much down there tonight. I would be more comfortable rostering, say, Josh Smith and Evan Turner or Josh Smith and Nick Batum or Nick Batum and Evan Turner. Uh, I think you can roster any of those three guys comfortably. Um, you know, Ariza, again, might be worth a look against Houston, but he's been so up and down of late. 
Uh, that's probably as low as I'd go. I wouldn't go below Ariza. Um, I don't think Houston's revolving door of guys is worth um, messing around with. Ariza's a pretty good defender anyways. Um, again, I, if I was on FanDuel, which I'm not playing over there tonight, um, I've, been very, I, I've been doing very well on FanDuel late, but I didn't like the teams I could come up with over there tonight, because, in part because of that small forward issue. Um, and the lack of position flexibility led me to other sites tonight. So, um, but I, that's how I would I would probably find some two out of three combo of Josh Smith, Batum, and Evan Turner, and stay away from Durant on FanDuel. All right, uh, what do you think about rank these guys? Price doesn't matter. John Wall, uh, Mike, and Lawson. I rank them. Probably, uh, I don't know, I'd, I'd rank Wall first, and, and I'd say if you're playing one guy from that list, it has to be John Wall. And I'd actually rank uh, Lawson slightly ahead of Michael Carter-Williams tonight. I know you're probably not in that boat uh, with me, but uh, that's that's the that's where I'm planting my EMAC flag. Fair enough. I'm not, I'm not fully against it, but I'm leaning towards Michael Carter-Williams, which normally I don't. I like to stay away from the popular play because I want that little contrarian, but tonight I'm just I'm, I'm feeling his matchup a little more uh, against, against uh, your, your twin uh, brother from another mother. Uh, who, so we, it's, like, it's like Cliff Paul and Chris Paul. We have the accountant. We have the NBA player. Look, the the similarities are just insane. Cards like yeah, you could this. put you know you could put that in the thread on the forums. I'm sure that my celebrity lookalike uh, just put my mug there with Raymond Felton, and uh, I think that you'd be hard hard pressed to tell a difference for sure. I completely agree. So, what do you think about Lamb uh, tonight with blowout potential and getting some more minutes? Or Man, every it seems like everybody asks about Jeremy Lamb lately, and I've seen him on quite a few rosters. Uh, is there something I'm missing, or why are people constantly in love with Jeremy Lamb these days? I One of my rules is I'll never roster a fringe bench player. I mean, I, I'll roster a sixth man that gets 32 minutes. Um, like, I'm going to make you bang the gong again. But before his injury, uh, Tyreek Evans was one of those guys. <laughs> and, and before he got banished from earth because of his shoelace in incidents, J.R. Smith was one of those guys that I could see rostering even though he comes off the bench um, because, you know, he's, they're, one, they're those guys where if you if you don't start, you know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but Jeremy Lamb is not one of those guys. I'm going to try to pull up a player card real quick. Um, you know, 26, 23, 27, 20, 21 in terms of minutes. On his whole player card there, he has, you know, one game where he's top 26 fantasy points. Um, no, I – and his minutes are consistent. I mean, on every single game in the last 10 games, and there's been some blowouts in there, every single one of those games, Jeremy Lamb's been between 20 and 27 minutes. So the blowout doesn't matter. I mean, he's going to play the second quarter and the fourth quarter pretty much regardless, or, or you know, up until maybe five minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Uh, if it's a blowout, it really doesn't affect him. So I don't know why people always tend to, to get on the Jeremy Lamb train when they think there's going to be a blowout. Um, it, it doesn't affect his minutes at all. So, no, I'm not on him. I don't see the fascination with him. Uh, but, again, I'm apparently one of the only ones on that train because I see him being rostered. Uh, it just doesn't make sense to me. Again, instead of rostering Lamb and Durant, I just go with two mid-range guys at small forward. All right, I'm making up a new axiom. When there's going to be a slaughter, you want to lead with lamb. Get it? <laughs> All right, I'm having way too much fun. And, and yes, my beer is done, so I'm back to Diet Mountain Dew, guys. So don't think I've had uh, too many because my, my little DraftKings koozie uh, only keeps so many so many beers cold. And it's, we're on here for an hour, and I don't like one beer. All right, uh, what do you think about Plumley tonight? But not that Plumley, the Nets Plumley. No. Uh, if you if you want to risk the Nets front court rotation, go ahead. Uh, it's not for me. No. Uh, we're done with Teletovic, right? He's just a mess. Yes. Okay. I'm done with the Nets front court for now until if they gave Andre Blatch 30, 30 to 35 minutes a night, um, he's the one guy I'd consider rostering, but he got like 15 minutes last night and the game went to double OT, so... Um, and, um, I know people are going to try to take an angle there of Garnett. You know, last night's game went to double overtime. Garnett played a ton of minutes. You don't have to get cute with your teams tonight. I mean, I don't know why pe people are, are asking about guys like Jeremy Lamb. Um, you know, 
fringe guys like that in the Nets front court. Um, no, I I don't feel it. I mean, if you're if you're trying to build a roster to make yourself fit Kevin Durant in, especially on a site like FanDuel where he's so expensive, I don't think you have to do that tonight. I, and to me, I, I'd go a little more balanced. All right. Uh, what do you think tonight? Oh, darn it, I had a good question. No, I lost it. Uh, Moscow. Uh, Orlando's going to play small, so we don't want any part of Moscow, right? No, even though somebody did post on the thread, I, I keep bringing up that thread, I do have a comparison to Tim Mozgov in there. Other than the fact that he has me by approximately one foot and eight inches, uh, yeah, I, we're, just a, we're just alike. Um, probably about as alike as me and Raymond Felton. But, yeah, unfortunately I, I cannot uh, recommend my twin tonight either. All right. Uh, let's see. Are you against Caspi? I'm not against Caspi. I... I... I think I'm burned enough by Francisco Garcia that I'm 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 now leaning towards Caspi tonight. Um, I don't know. I mean, they, Again, they played more last. more value elsewhere, but they played last night. They played last night. They had the same rotation. Omri Caspi's line last night was six minutes, no points, no rebounds, no assists, no fantasy points. I no, I'm not on him. All right, zipping through uh, top three point or pardon me, top three shooting guards of the night. All right, let me remove my filter and go to shooting guard on Fanduel. Shooting guard, uh, I'd say Harden's probably a pretty clear number one. Um, Harden's probably a head and shoulders number one. Uh, I probably put Ellis two. And my third play, maybe a little sneaky, but definitely a little bit cheaper. Uh, and I know we don't like this game in general, but he is the one guy I'm targeting in this game just because the minutes are going to be there. Uh, I'd say for your third spot, um, some random combination of either Gerald Green, Eric Gordon, or Jimmy Butler. I, I like Jimmy Butler. I guess I'd put him third. Okay. Uh, let's see. I think that's we've cut up with most of them there. So let's zip over. Do no draft. I don't know what Pete's doing. No, no Starship pick five again. I'm sad. Cards. I, we must have been nailing it, so they shut it down on Saturdays. Uh, so we're going to a rapid fire tonight, courtesy of Draft Day. Uh, so let's just jump right in. We have Ty Lawson versus Goran Dragic. I'll take Lawson. I concur. Joachim Noah or Andre Drummond. Uh, Drummond. That's easy enough for me. Josh Smith or John Wall? Now, I've got John Wall as my top player of the night. Apologies to Melo, but I've got John Wall. Uh, who do you like, Smith or Wall? Yeah, hey, I'll take uh, Mr. John Wall there. I think uh, he's in store for a big game against Jeremy Lin. All right, here's where we make some hay. Kevin Durant versus Carmelo Anthony. Take Melo. I, I, I don't know. That's a very, very tough decision, but if you're saying that there's going to be a blowout and Durant sits in the fourth quarter... Um, I, there, there's virtually no way that Carmelo doesn't get his stats tonight. I mean, he's a volume scorer. He plays a ton of minutes. That game's going to be super fast. Uh, his usage rate is pretty similar to what Durant's is. So, and again, they might decide to take it a little easy on Durant's minutes there. And I think that 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 pick five that that one is in there to try to you know the obvious person would just look and say, oh, Durant's the number one guy. Um, so I'll take Melo by a hair there. All right, and then we're going to have to earn it on this one, too. Kyle Lowry or Damian Lillard, who will be guarded by Avery Bradley tonight? I'll take Lowry. I don't really care for either of those guys tonight, but I think it's uh, definitely not a good night for Lillard. I would concur with that. All right, let's zip back over here and see if we've got any questions on this page. Oh, thoughts on Foy? Heck yeah, play him. He's cheap. He's fantastic. Since he's been reinserted in the starting lineup, he has just been stellar, and he is shooting guard eligible, which we like very much on sites like FanDuel, where we don't have a lot of roster flexibility. Did I miss anything yeah, I, on, on Foy? No, I think he's a guy, if you're really looking for a cheap punt, um, he's a guy that you can put in there. Don't go for Jeremy Lamb or Omri Caspi or Mason Plumley. Uh, at least Foy has guaranteed some minutes, and he's been uh, his shots been falling of late. So this is definitely the time to target him for sure. All right, we've got a triple up here. We've got DeRozan, Batum, and Fatty Daddy. Oh my God, it's a quadruple up. We're going to pick somebody's entire lineup for him here, Card. Are you ready? DeRozan, okay. Batum, Fatty Daddy, and Humphreys. So Humphreys is our punt. Or Shumpert, 
Lamb, Mellow, and The Brow. Ooh, i got to go with the first one. I that depends. If that's a cash game, I would probably go the first one. Um, if it's a GPP, I'd probably go with the second one. But what worries me is, um, you know, that first combo, the, the first lineup I like better, but fading Mellow is a big risk tonight. Uh <laughs> I don't know. I could see rostering either one of those combos, but to me, I, I'd take the base of the first one and then try to find a way to work Anthony in there. Yeah, that's a good way to go. Cantavius, uh, uh, Cantwell, Pope, or Shumpert? I'll take Shumpert. I, I just think uh, he's got a pretty high floor tonight, given his minutes and the matchup. Uh, would... Oof. Yes. Barely agreeing. I'm still swayed by, by Caldwell Pope last time, but, uh, yeah, it's not a bad one. Uh, uh, I mean, it, it, the, the Caldwell Pope, I mean, they played the Sixers last night, so. Oh, thank you, yes. So, therefore, therefore by transitive properties, we are all over <laughs> Shumpert, because why? Because he's, he's playing, playing the Sixers. Sixers tonight. There we go. Thank you. I, again, doing too many things at once here. That's all right. Uh, have you ever have, have you ever seen a team? I mean, um, did you play daily fantasy NBA last year? Were you? Yes, I did. I actually I did mean, pretty well. Has there ever been a team that people have targeted so much than the Sixers defense this year? No. Uh, no, there just there has not been. There may have been sporadic times when people were out, but not like this year. The pace is just insane. I mean, there's sort of the hey, let's take let's take the Nuggets when they're going against a weaker team at home in mile high because they're going to get more run and the, the other team's going to be gassed because they're they're playing their fourth game on five nights or whatever. They look for that, but not like this just absolute targeting. Everybody against the team, with the exception of last year, a lot of people like to stack Portland. Now it's not the same the same thing, but because all the Portland stats were really consolidated in four guys last year. Yeah, they had but no bench. <laughs> unab yeah, this unabashed. We're just it's the Sixers. They're the they're the they play the fastest and they're they're the worst. Go for it. Uh, we the match here's the matchup I here's the matchup I want to see. I want to see the next time the Bucks play the Sixers, and let's see let's see how we attack that one. Oh, uh, ah, yeah. <laughs> I, I can't. Hopefully that doesn't come up when I'm on, because I want to see how somebody else does it. <laughs> um, all right, let's rip through a few more questions here. we got uh, a few minutes. we got a few queued up tonight. Butler is a game-time decision. I believe he had a thigh bruise. I don't know anything Whoa, more. Whoa, if that's that. the case, I missed that. Um, let me he see came back I... in the game. He came back in the game and still played close to 40 minutes last night, even with the thigh bruise. But I think you actually have to be missing both legs before uh, before Thibodeau won't throw you out there. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy Butler is going to be his new Lou all day. Um, the typical game will be like 40, 45 minutes. Yeah, uh, strike it, Tariq Evans. Blah, blah, blah. I can't even talk. Tyreek Evans, in or out? Have we you gotta bang them? the gong on yourself there. Oh God! See, now I'm trying to help people, and I can't keep up with all the. Little... That was bad. Um, I'm trying to read, uh, and see if I can find anything. I mean, I, it it seems like if he couldn't even come back into the game last night, uh, I, I'd I'd find it highly doubtful that he's going to play tonight. But I have not seen anything definitive. No, but I mean, why would you want to roster him tonight? I, why, I just wouldn't even take the risk, even if he's active. I don't know. Well, because you'll be the only one owning him. Because after last night, nobody nobody's happy with him at the moment. Uh, let's see, Gordon Goran Dragic or Brandon Jennings? I'm going with Dragic barely. Yeah, I'll take Goran there. I think he's a heavy volume player with uh, Bledsoe out. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna find a couple questions. Do you like? Oh, see all these hockey questions. You hockey guys, dang it! I thought we had a bunch of questions here. All right, give us your uh, top three center plays cards. I gotta type an answer to a question on the other. Sure. 
Um, I would say that Howard's the number one guy, despite the price tag. Um, again, if price is irrelevant here, you got to rank Howard as the top guy. I'd probably rank Drummond second, and then uh, I'd probably rank Hawes third, slightly ahead of Noah, just because the uh, the Bulls game is going to be played at such a slow pace. So I'd say uh, Dwight Howard, Andre Drummond, Spencer Hawes. All right, and then who are the people that we just absolutely have to stay away from today that seem like obvious plays? <laughs> are there any? Well, I think we got to stay away from Tyreek Evans, for one. Uh, I, think, uh, <laughs> I think he's a guy you definitely don't want to roster tonight. Um, again, the guy I mentioned at the beginning of the show, I think Joe Johnson's a guy that a lot of people might have that I'm not on tonight. Off a double overtime game, he's getting older. Um, on the road, I think it's a rough spot for Joe Johnson. So Joe Johnson would be kind of the guy that I'd say, uh, some people are going to be on him tonight, but you might want to steer clear. All right, Eric Gordon must play. I say no, uh, and I actually don't have him rostered anywhere. What do you think about Eric Gordon tonight with somebody who's probably going to be sitting? Tonight. All he so does is, somebody. I mean, all, all he does is score. So I don't think that anybody else being out. I mean, it's not he, he's going to run the point or anything like that. Um, uh, Rick Bonnell, the the beat writer for the Bobcats, actually just tweeted. Uh, he's a very very in the no beat writer. The Bobcats are playing the Bulls tonight, uh, and he actually just tweeted that that Jimmy Butler does have a real chance to miss this game. So uh, I totally missed that last night. So I'm glad it, whether you found that or somebody in the chat uh, found that. Um, it's enough to get me off of Jimmy Butler just in case, especially on sites that uh, that don't have a uh, late swap. But that really, really diminishes the value of, in the Bulls' backcourt. Uh, maybe a slight bump to Kirk Heinrich with Butler being out. Um, but other than that, I don't see a whole lot. Uh, just, just be careful with, uh, with Jimmy Butler if you have him on your teams. All right. Uh, last, last thoughts on the Nets' front court. I can't find any value there. I don't. It doesn't matter to me who's in or out. I'm just, like you said, not touching them. I don't care if it's Plumley. I don't care if it's Blatch. I just I don't want any part of it tonight. They played a double overtime game at home last night, beat the Heat, really good win. Now they travel on the road to take on Toronto up in Canada the night after a double overtime win. It's just a bad spot for the Nets. Um, don't get cued and try to figure out who's going to get the minutes in that front court because, to be honest, let's be honest, none of us know. Um no, just don't do it tonight. There's too much. There's other guys out there that you can take uh, without the risk that you run of trying to, to run one of those Brooklyn guys out there. Uh, what do you think about Ariza being playable tonight? I'm staying away again. I mentioned before from the Washington uh, swingman, even Beal. Uh, do you like any of them tonight? I think he's I think he's playable, but not a guy I'm going out of my way to get again. He's been so inconsistent since Beal's come back. I, I'd rather spend a little bit more and get a safer option at small forward. Uh, I feel it just feels like with all the questions tonight that people are grasping um, for middle of the road to low end plays. Um, yeah, I, I boy, I either my rosters look a lot different than everybody else's tonight. Um, or people are trying to find GPP plays, or I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. I mean, I guess my guys are, I thought most of the guys that I have would be fairly highly owned tonight, um, but guys are getting mentioned that never really even crossed my radar. So that doesn't necessarily mean anything. It's just, uh, it was out of the, it's, some of these questions have been a little uh, off the beaten path from what I expected. All right. Well, let's let's just quickly go our our final thoughts on 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 the games and the players from them. We have the the Nets uh, at the Raptors. It's a 192 over under. I'm not seeing a screaming buy on anybody there. I'll have a little bit of Livingston, and I'm just going to pick a few Toronto guys where they slot into my rosters. Yeah, I would agree. And I'm Joe Johnson. I'm fading tonight, but he is at a good price on most sites. Um, you know, if you want to roster one of the Raptors big guys again, if they fit in, fine. Kyle Lowry fits in fine, but nobody that you have to have. All right, we've got Houston at the Wizards. It's a the Wizards are favored by two. It's a 202 spread. Love Harden, having a hard time getting D12 into my lineup on the Wizards side. Absolutely love John Wall. He he and Melo are right there for my plays of the day. Those are my plays for that game. Yeah, like John Wall, I think Howard's playable. 
Um, again, Ariza, if you really need to grasp at small forward, but that's about it for me. Okay, uh, 206 over under, one point spread. Suns at Pistons. I like a lot of people in this game. So yeah, if, you're, if you're trying to find nets, find the corresponding value and position in this game and play the people in this game. It's my, yeah, my advice. Yeah, Dragic definitely in play. A lot of people are going to be on Josh Smith after his game last night. Uh, Knicks Sixers, again, we've been over. I don't think you can go wrong with any of the Knicks starters. A lot of the Sixers guys in play as well. Uh, I like Hawes, and um, I like Thad Young, and you like Michael Carter-Williams quite a bit. Um, anybody else? Did I miss anybody from that one? No, we're good. Raymond Felton support group starts here in about in about 35 minutes in the uh, chat. Uh, Bobcats and Bulls just skip more it. or less punting <laughs> on this one. Bucks and Thunder, maybe night for the Bucks. Probably Duran if you can fit him in the, your lineup for the Thunder. That's really about it. Don't screw around with Lamb. Not worth yeah. it tonight. Way better value. New Orleans at Mavericks. They just played this game last night. There, it's a home and home. Uh, Two hundred points. Roberts absolutely everywhere. He's too cheap not to play him. Uh, Jay Crowder. Maybe if you're looking for a GPP punt, get the Brow in there and get Monte Ellis in there. Anybody else on that game? Maybe Dirk if you're looking to differentiate. You just want a cash game differentiation. Yeah, I do. Uh, I agree on Roberts. I'll be on him again tonight. Uh, I don't disagree with anything else that you said there. Uh, last couple games, I'll run through them real quick. Orlando and Denver, uh, a really high spread. With Aaron Aflalo, probably a game-time decision. I like Glenn Davis and Tobias Harris for Orlando. Ty Lawson for Denver. Uh, Boston and Portland, just a tough game for Boston on the road on the West Coast. Uh, don't really like a ton of guys on there. Chris Humphreys is playing well if you can still get him on the cheap. Uh, Portland, I'd say Batum and, and Aldridge and Robin Lopez are our targets there. Um, but going to be a lot of people on uh, on some different guys tonight, so it'll be interesting to see how it turns out. Absolutely, and there is nothing wrong with that because oftentimes if the herd's all going one way and you feel confident in your picks, hey, go the other way. That's okay. Sometimes you just want to stop and say, am I the crazy one? Or is everybody else the crazy one? Once you determine that, then put your lineups in. Uh, any last-minute thoughts, Cards? That was a quick hour. Yeah, it was. Uh, good luck, everybody, and uh, we'll see you on the other side. All right, and there is a show tomorrow with Louis Cards and, I believe, Gaby. Uh, there's only a three-game slate. I think uh, all the games start or the games start at 6.00. We'll have our content and stuff up again tomorrow. It'll be somewhat limited because there are limited options, gamers, so I don't want to hear people riding in to support saying, how come he only picked four players in this tier? It's because there were only four players worth playing. I'm not going to give you some, not going to give you a bad play just to give you five plays. All right? That's it. Thank you, DraftKings. Thank you, Raymond Felton's twin, for joining me today. <laughs> And uh, I think with that, uh, to borrow a line from Gaby, Seacrest, out!